All right, welcome everybody. We are going to finish up talking about the other half of multiplying and dividing fractions, which is of course dividing fractions. So we're gonna talk about finding reciprocals, very important vocab, finding reciprocals and dividing fractions. All right, so what is a reciprocal? So reciprocals are pairs of numbers that multiply to equal one. So if it's two numbers, you multiply them with each other, they get an answer of one, the product is one, those are reciprocals. So the reciprocal of six, for example, is one sixth. And the reason for that is because if I do six times one sixth, I get six sixths, which is one. So, six and one sixth, those are reciprocals. Uh, here's another one. The reciprocal of three fourths is four thirds. And why would that be? Because three fourths times four thirds equals, well, there's a couple ways to do this, but we can say 12 twelfths, right? Because the numerators multiply to 12 and the denominators multiply to 12 and any number over itself is one. So you might notice something interesting about reciprocals, which is it's basically the same fraction flipped, right? The numerator and denominator flip. And that's even true here because uh, six goes to the denominator and then the invisible one that's underneath all whole numbers goes to the numerator. So in order to find the reciprocal, you simply flip the numerator and denominator because if you take a fraction and then flip it and multiply, it's going to equal one. All right, so when we are multiplying and dividing, there's an interesting pattern that happens. Multiplying and dividing are very closely related. So take a step back and just follow, follow me here. When you multiply and divide by the same number, your original number remains the same. Let me show you what I mean. Let's take an original number that's really easy to work with, like 10. If I multiply 10 by six, I get 60 and then I divide by six, what happens? Well, it gets six times bigger and then six times smaller. We're back to 10, right? My original number remained the same. Times six divided by six. They undo each other, don't they? Okay. This is also true when you multiply by a number and it's reciprocal. So let's start with 10. Let's multiply by six and let's multiply by one sixth. Well, what happens? Well, six and one sixth, this is the number one. Remember, we talked about it. It has to equal one because they're reciprocals. So 10 times one is simply 10. Okay, so I'm going to highlight something in red. That's the only difference between these two equations. The first equation, we do 10 times six, and then we divide by six to make it smaller, and we get back to 10. In the second equation, we do 10 times six, and then we multiply by the reciprocal to make it smaller, to get back to 10. What that means is dividing by a number is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So anytime we have a division problem, if we want to, we can change it to multiplying by the reciprocal. This is very, very helpful. So dividing by a number is equivalent to multiplying by its reciprocal. Let's see what I mean. Four fifths divided by seven eighths. I don't know how to do that with division, with long division, with the, that's okay. Because what I can do is I can keep my first number the same and then Instead of dividing by 7 eighths, I multiply by the reciprocal of 7 eighths. What's the reciprocal of 7 eighths? 8 sevenths. So then I simply multiply. 4 times 8 is 32, and 5 times 7 is 35. And there was nothing in common that I could simplify out, right? I couldn't cancel any, divide any common factors or anything. So I'm done. Let's look at the next one. One half 
divided by three fourths. I don't know how many times three fourths goes into one half. Well, let me just change it to multiplying by the reciprocal. One half times, what's the reciprocal of three fourths? Well, we already talked about that. It's four thirds. And now I could multiply, but oh wait, look, let's use our, our trick from the other video. Can I find any common factors here? Well, yes, two and four, right? They're both even, so they're both divisible by two. So let's divide by two here, we get a two. Divide by two here, we get a one. And then I just multiply across. One times two is two, and one times three is three, which means my answer here must be two thirds. Now you'll notice I haven't said anything about positive and negative numbers. And isn't that the unit that we're in? I've really only talked about sixth grade stuff. Well, that's because you guys are in luck. All the rules for multiplying and dividing integers are the same for fractions. So what do I mean by that? If you have an odd amount of negatives, then the answer becomes negative because it flips negative, positive, negative, positive, and then it ends up being negative. But if there's an even amount of negatives, then it goes to the negative, then to the positive, and then it's positive. So those rules are exactly the same. In fact, all you need to know is that little thing, and then you're basically doing the exact same problems as if it were uh, you know, a fifth or sixth grade multiplying and dividing fractions problem. All right, good luck.